Greetings, and behold, the Tiger Learning Computer. Yes, the same company that brought you classic systems like the R-Zone and the Gamecom bring you this. The Tiger Learning Computer is a very rare computer, and that's because it never made it out of the test market phase. It was only sold for a brief period of time in Minneapolis, Atlanta, St. Louis, and Dallas. If you happen to have lived in one of those areas in 1996 or 1997, then there's a chance that you saw it in one of your local retail stores. What really makes this computer unique is that Tiger was able to get Apple to license its Apple IIe technology to build this computer. Essentially what you have here is an enhanced Apple IIe with a 65 CO2 processor and 128 kilobytes of RAM. Tiger was proud of this too, they even wrote Apple IIe technology right on the box. I get a kick out of some of the advertising on this thing too. Check this out. Tiger Learning Computer. A real computer. As opposed to what exactly? A fake computer? Alright, let's unbox this thing. I got it in practically new condition. You can see all of the original packaging materials are still in place. There's not a whole lot of documentation included. You have the instruction manual for the computer, as well as instructions for all of the different programs. Considering it's from Tiger and it retailed for only $149, it's pretty sufficient. And here is the computer. At first glance, it looks like a cheap 90s laptop until you open it, and you're like, they forgot to install the screen! But no, it's by design. Instead, you have this cover that reveals compartments for your cartridges. Now, this could be an obvious problem because it could obstruct your view of the TV or monitor that you have to connect this thing into, so they let you remove it. Yeah, this is looking more and more like a Tiger product. Take a look at the keyboard. You can see this is not an Apple II keyboard. They don't have the Apple keys, instead they have Player 1 and Player 2, and they have function keys at the top. On the back you can see all the different ports available. Interestingly, it requires a PS2 mouse. It doesn't have support for floppy disk drives though, and that's a real shame. It does, however, at least have a serial port. And if you could get that working with ADT Pro, you could theoretically transfer just about any Apple II game to this thing. Alright, I got this thing connected to my monitor. I've placed in all of the pack-in cartridges. These cartridges kind of remind me of a Game Boy cartridge, though sadly, they're not compatible. What shall I load first? How about some mech and a sticky bear? There are actually two slots, one on each side that the computer basically recognizes as your floppy disk drives. It's a very tight squeeze, so you do have to give it a bit of force. All right, let's power this thing up. Hello, please choose an activity. That wasn't that a nice warm welcome. I believe I will choose an activity. You can see a nice graphical user interface is presented here. Let me go through the different options. If you click disk, you can see the different disks, or cartridges in this case. If it's a ProDOS disk image, you can see the contents. You can also perform various actions as indicated at the bottom of the window. Now if it's a DOS 3.3 image, you can't do that, but you can still run the disk image or format it. A really cool feature is the fact that you can run BASIC right from the desktop. Tiger was able to license AppleSoft BASIC from Microsoft. The fact that this modern computer at the time was using 20-year-old technology just seems so crazy to me. I mean, I'm really glad it happened as a retro computing fan, but it just does not seem like a good business strategy. Alright, let me go back to the desktop here. One of the things that I was really interested in was this communication setup. I tried to get this thing to talk to the outside world through ADT Pro, and I was not able to do that, unlike all my other Apple II computers. After searching online, I found that the few other people that had this computer basically had the same result. So maybe Tiger did something to the serial connection where it only works with a modem or something. I'm not totally sure. I know Tiger had big plans for this computer. They even advertised an internet package on the box. But in 1997, Steve Jobs returned to Apple, and one of the first things he did there was end their licensing agreements. This is why the computer never made it out of the test market phase. As far as the programs that are included, you have a decent variety. Most of these are aimed at young children. This is a mech title called Grammar Gobble. Pretty self-explanatory. 
Here's a Sticky Bear typing program. This is actually a double-sided cartridge, so if you flip the switch on it, you can play side B. The other side of this disc is actually a really fun game. Yes, that's right. Sticky Bear Basket Bounce. A title I've never heard of before playing it on this computer. But nonetheless, I have found myself kind of addicted to it. You play as a bear dressed in a suit, and you have to collect balls in your basket. What's not to love? Ooh, I just got hit in the balls with a bouncy ball. And that's pretty much the game. The balls start to get faster, and then they'll get lower to the ground, so you have to jump over them, and there's obstacles, and it gets crazy, and it's a lot of fun. There is a RAM disk cartridge included with a battery backup, so you can actually save your programs or any files you put on there. This is kind of essential, and it basically works as your external hard drive. You also have AppleWorks included, which was very popular in the 80s. Interestingly, you only get access to the word processor feature, even though the database and spreadsheet options are there. All in all, I would say that the Tiger Learning Computer has a lot of potential. If it had a built-in LCD screen, a better keyboard, floppy drive support, and a working serial port, this could be the ultimate Apple II computer. As it stands, though, it's still an interesting piece of Apple and Tiger computer history. Thank you for watching.